Hello everybody, we're going to do another sample problem. This one is going to deal with colligative properties. I think it should be pretty straightforward. The first question says, what will be the freezing point and boiling point of an aqueous solution if we were to put in 30 grams of magnesium chloride and we added that to 250 milliliters of water? Just a couple things to point out with colligative properties. First of all, this lowercase m that is molality, that's the oddball type of concentration measure that actually asks for what mass, specifically in kilograms, of solvent did you use. It doesn't ask for the solution, you know, volume of solution or mass of solution. It's of just the thing that's dissolving. And so here's my thing that's just dissolving. Remember a gram per milliliter is the same thing as a kilogram per liter. And 250 milliliters is the same thing as 0 0.250 liters. And so we are going to be dealing with a situation where we will have 0 0.250 kilograms of water. And that is our solvent. So let's just kind of keep that off to the side. That's going to save us some time when we start plugging in numbers. The other thing to make sure you remember is that this little I, that's called the Van Hoff factor, if anything, I think the Van Hoff factor is just a reminder. It's a don't forget that when you put a magnesium chloride into solution or you put a unit of that into solution, it's going to go to a magnesium 2 plus. And then because of this 2 in the empirical formula, you're going to get a chlorine minus, so a chloride, and you get another one. So I stick magnesium chloride into solution. If it is a one molal solution of magnesium chloride, you have a three because one, two, three molal solution of ions. Now the way this equation is set up is you have your reminder, hey, don't forget, you need to call this magnesium chloride a three because it'll get three units in solution, but let's just go ahead and stay with the molality of the one unit of the stuff. So for us up here, I is going to be equal to three for part A, but let's go look really quickly at part B, how many grams of sodium chloride. Well, I am only going to get two pieces off of that, the sodium plus and the chloride minus. And so for this guy, I will be equal to two. All right, let's start cranking some numbers here. First, let's find the molality for part A. It's going to be moles of magnesium chloride per kilogram of H2O. I'm putting in 30 grams of magnesium chloride. And then I just need to use my molar mass to get over to moles. And I just gave that number to us to save a little time. How many grams gives me one mole of the stuff. And I'll just go ahead and put that number in up here. So that, after the conversion, is 315. I'll carry out another sig fig there. That many moles of magnesium chloride. Then we actually already calculated from the initial information that I'm going to have 0 0.250 kilograms. So my molality is going to be 1.26 m, little m, molal. Okay, now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and just start plugging in on our bigger equation here about the colligative properties. I guess I didn't talk in full detail about all of these things. We're going to have a delta T. I'll go ahead and calculate for boiling first. So remember the delta T, the change in temperature, this is what you're going to change the boiling point by. And you always should remember that boiling points will always go up once you start adding some salts or sugars or things like that to them. On the other hand, though, freezing points, that's what this little F is for. Freezing points always go down. The way I always remember this is that you always expand the range of temperatures that you can be a liquid. So boiling goes up, freezing goes down, always. The way these equations are written, the delta T typically in science so often is a final minus initial for that delta. And we stick to that and we hold to it and then all of a sudden minus signs are super important for us. Where that falls apart a little bit on this is we don't really have a final minus initial. So what one could do with that on this is one could say the final minus initial, this could be the with salt, in our case it's a salt, and this could be the without. So for boiling, this would be large, this would be small, a large number minus a small number, that's going to be a plus. So that equation up at the top looks good. For freezing, 
final minus initial with this same sort of idea, the width of salt, this would be a smaller number, minus a large, and that would give us a negative value after we do the delta. So, long story short, sometimes you will actually see the freezing version of this equation written with a little minus sign in the front of it, but sometimes you don't see that. In the end, you just have to keep track of what's going on, and I'll make my statement again. Remember that you expand the range of temperatures that liquid can exist in. So freezing points go down, boiling points go up. The last thing that I never really mentioned were these K values. There's one for boiling, there's one for freezing. Those are constants that have to do with the actual solution, the liquid that you are using. So these are for water specifically, something you would go and you'd look up in a book. Okay, back to our problem at hand. What is the change in the boiling point here? Because B for boiling. It's going to be my Van Hoff factor. We already decided it was 3 for magnesium chloride. Then I just need my constant. 0 0.512 degrees Celsius. And then it's per molal. Remember molal over here if I were to write the alternative units. That's mole per kilogram. So that constant is written in a way that you would still end up canceling molal as a unit which is good so that our equation just works out. Now we need my molality. And again, I could write this as a little m, or if you want, maybe this time I'll write it as mole per kilogram so that you can see that the units do actually cancel there. And this is a delta T of 1.936 degrees Celsius. Again, boiling points go up. Since the normal boiling point of water is 100, we'll assume that we're at standard pressure here. We would say now the boiling point for this solution would be this, where really these are the values that were significant from the multiplication process before I did my addition. So I could better write this to be just a little bit more clear. Okay, for freezing, we would go through and we would do the same thing. What's nice is the molality is the same, the Van Hoff factor is the same. We just have a different constant. So delta T is going to be 3. Now 1.86 degrees Celsius kilogram per mole times 1.26 mole per kilogram. This one is influenced more, 7.03 degrees Celsius. But remember, I would be taking that away from the zero degrees Celsius definition of the freezing point for water. So zero minus that number is going to be negative 7.03 degrees Celsius is the new freezing point, whereas this was the boiling point up here. Okay, so let me just get a little board space. Those were my answers from part A. Okay, so part B is just a little bit of a reversal, just to give you a different feel to the same type of problem, though. What I really need to know is what concentration measured in molality would give me this 103 degrees Celsius boiling point but specifically what this problem asks for is the number of grams of sodium chloride. So what we'll do is we'll take that original equation with the Kb, and instead of writing in molality, I'm going to substitute in, that's number of moles, per mass. And I'm going to just write that out so I don't confuse my symbols. But that would be the mass in kilograms of the water, which is staying at this 0.25 kilogram. So the change in temperature that elevation in the boiling point, that was 3 degrees Celsius. That's going to be equal to, remember we talked about how the Van Hoff is only going to be a 2 for the sodium chloride. Then I'm going to plug in my constant, 0 0.512 degrees Celsius, kilogram per mole. In, that's what I'm solving for right now. That'll be something measured in moles. In 0 0.250 kilograms. And if I do that, N ends up being 0.732 moles of sodium chloride. That's what I get from taking these guys and dividing into the denominator. But this guy over here, remember, that's going to go up into the numerator over there. So I'm really almost there. Now I just need to use my conversion factor on this number of moles, my specifically my molar mass conversion factor, which is right here, to give me to the number of grams. So if I multiply this value by my 58.44, we're going to find, and this is my final answer, I need 42.8 grams of sodium chloride. That's a lot.
but nonetheless that is my final answer. So in summary, the equations associated with the colligative properties, at least these freezing point and boiling point changes, they're pretty straightforward. You just got to keep track of what each value is, and what units it's measured in, where do you find the thing, what is a Van Hoff factor, how do I get a hold of these constants. Just keeping track of those things will get you to the right place. So hopefully that problem made sense to you. If it did, you should let your computer know.